Hello everyone, welcome back to Lupus Comforts. Today I'll share with you the causes of lupus. But before we go ahead, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has viewed and subscribed to my channel. I am aware of the stigma associated with having a chronic illness, but I'm overwhelmed with your support, personal messages and words of encouragement to keep raising awareness on lupus, so thank you. In my previous video, I had given a brief overview of what lupus is, and very quickly I want to touch on what lupus is not. Lupus is not contagious. It is not airborne or waterborne. You will not catch lupus by hugging or being in the company of lupus sufferers. Lupus is not like or related to cancer. Lupus is an autoimmune condition that attacks healthy, healthy tissues, whereas cancer is a collection of abnormal cells that divide and grow uncontrollably and destroy body tissues. Lupus is not like or related to HIV or AIDS. HIV is a virus that is acquired in the body that attacks the immune system. But lupus is that immune system getting confused and attacking itself. I feel life with chronic autoimmune condition is difficult in itself. And the last thing we want is to be made to feel ashamed of having this condition. I sincerely hope that with awareness on this issue, we can break down that stigma associated with having chronic illnesses. Moving on, what causes lupus? I had mentioned earlier that there is no one known cause of lupus and no one knows why our immune system, our body's army gets confused and starts attacking its own self. Many online articles suggest that lupus could develop in response to a combination of factors. It could be through exposure to medications, infections and environmental factors. It could even be genetics or hormones. Here's a bit more information on the potential triggers of lupus. Number one, genetics. Researchers say there may be more than 50 genes which are likely to contribute to its lupus, though there is no evidence to suggest that these genes directly cause lupus. Having these genes could just set the scene, but it is the other environmental factors that contribute to whether or not you will develop lupus and when. So having the lupus gene does not necessarily mean you will develop lupus. And not having the gene does not necessarily mean you will not develop lupus. You could still get lupus without having any family history of it. This is my case. None of my family members, great great grandparents, none of them ever complained, nor had any signs of lupus, except me. Oh well. Though anyone can get lupus, certain ethnic groups may be at a higher risk. Say people of Africa, Native America, Asia and the Pacific Islands. Also, lupus affects people of all ages, but it is most often diagnosed between the ages of 15 and 45. Number two, hormones. Well, lupus is more common in women than in men. Nine out of 10 cases of lupus are in females. Hence, research suggests that female hormonal activity, which could be the production of high estrogen, use of contraceptive pills or pregnancy that could onset lupus. But once again, there is ongoing research beyond hormonal levels which could shed some light on why women are more prone to lupus than men. 3. Environmental factors could trigger lupus in genetically susceptible people. And the biggest culprit is the sunlight. Exposure to direct sunlight could trigger an internal autoimmune response and could just set off that dormant lupus gene. For me, being a Pacific Islander, it is not that easy to avoid sun. <laughs> Who doesn't like a nice tan? White sandy beaches, turquoise water, coconut palms, tequila. Oops, got carried away a little bit. There's ongoing research on harmful effects of ultraviolet rays from the sun to exposure to fluorescent light on lupus sufferers. Other environmental factors could be the various infections and viruses, like the common cold, Zika virus, Ebola, tuberculosis. These could also initiate lupus. Next, exposure to chemicals in the environment. Examples of chemical exposure could be paint fumes, drugs, detergent, cylindered gas, and so on. Medications. 
Lupus could be triggered by certain types of medications, but usually medical drug-induced lupus gets better once the medication stops. Next, stress. It could be emotional stress, mental stress, breakups, deaths in the family, or just other lifestyle complications. It could also be stress to the body through surgery, injury, pregnancy, and so on. One could ask, what's the big deal? Nearly every one of us are exposed to these environmental factors. Stress, sunlight, chemicals, pollution, viruses. Most of us are women. So does that mean we are all at risk of getting lupus? I feel these potential triggers are just too broad and vague. Doesn't quite convince being causes of lupus, isn't it? But I must admit, it does help to know these potential triggers when we are managing lupus condition. Hopefully, the day is not too far when scientists can zero on to some detachable factors and then you can go, aha, that could have caused lupus. Okay, we are still fuzzy on the causes of lupus. So how will we know if we have it? What are some of the symptoms of lupus? I will share this information in my next video. Please do subscribe to my channel and share this video with your loved ones so that they too can be aware of the potential triggers of lupus. I also hope that we can become more compassionate towards each other. Till my next video, stay safe and thanks for watching.